All right, so what I'm doing right now is my e-brake goes up way too high. It's basically straight up and hitting the trim here, or the center console when I have it all the way up. And then I also got this little skitter button here that I'm gonna be putting on. Oh, Oh, I'm hurting myself. Can't beat me. That was crazy. So now with that off, I can show you. Um, Nissan leaves you this nice bolt here. You can actually get to it without taking this off, which makes it super easy. But all you have to do is tighten that, and see all there's all this slack. Get all that slack out, so you can you don't have to pull it so far. I can do 16 clicks. There we go. Six and it's pretty tight. It's a lot better. So for the drift button is super easy. All I have to do is remove that metal tab there that's holding the spring. Because that spring is what uh, pushes the button forward which controls the mechanism which you can see right there how it clicks you lift it and it can drop and if you if you want to you can remove the uh, the spring from this hole right here which I'm gonna do or else it rattles around there and you can hear it Perfect. And while I'm at it, since I'm too cheap to get one of these real rubber seals, I'm gonna just be replacing my tin foil, which works great and cost me zero dollars because I grabbed it from the kitchen. Also in the uh, stereo install video, our sound system upgrade, I didn't show this, but I have it this is how I have it run. It's almost perfect because there's a clip right here. I don't know what that's for, but it's meant to be. And then there's also this bracket that mine came with, which mounts there. And it's the perfect distance. And then it goes around there and through the back. When you take this out, it's nice to always get the McDonald's out of there too. Damn, look at that. All right, so I'm gonna be installing these new rotors here, rotors and brake pads. Um, it's not too bad on this side, but if you look at the other side, I already did the other side yesterday. Look at that basically nothing it's almost on the backing plate and it wasn't making any noise so I don't know what was wrong with the the piece that like if you look here that metal piece right here if you don't already know this is once it gets to that uh, depth there it'll squeal against the rotor and make a loud noise to let you know that you need new brake pads but it wasn't doing that so 
I don't know. Anyways, that's why my e-brake wasn't locking up clearly. But also this back here. Um, try to get a good angle here. You can see there the e-brake on this side isn't even connected. It's completely off. So once I take the caliper off, I'm going to try and get this back to normal. And like I said, I already did the other side yesterday, but the footage was probably not the best. I haven't looked at it yet, but it started raining and it got dark like three quarters of the way through. So I figured I'd just do it all in daylight today. Hopefully it won't rain. It shouldn't rain. It's going to be beauty day. Before I even start though, I'm going to clean the wheel wells. I'm also going to be painting the calipers just so they, they look... Uh, a little nicer, don't look so rusty and gross. First thing I'm gonna be doing is removing the caliper from the mounting bracket, which is just this bolt here and this bolt here. I'm not sure how this happened, but this is supposed to be up against this bar here. And yeah, I'm gonna have to compress it back there. So now with the caliper off, we can take out the brake pads. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the wear on this one's pretty uneven. If you look, Look at that, it's really bad. So these rotors might be warped. So to remove the mounting bracket, there's just two 17 mils here, I believe. Caliper mounting bracket is off. So the rotor should just come off. But if it's anything like the other side, which it probably is, it's gonna be a bitch to get off. yesterday. I guess we don't need the sledgehammer. Let's see, if I didn't have this stuff, I might have been there for an extra 10 minutes. There's your old rotor. So now I gotta compress this piston to um, get the new brake pads in there, which was extremely hard yesterday because I don't have the tool. I drove to Canadian Tire to get it and they told me that somebody already rented it out, so um, I figured out a way to do it though, and you will see that in a second. Yesterday I tried using pliers to get in the grooves here, I tried using pliers to twist this, I tried using tin snips, these were, worked the best, but they didn't work at all, if that makes any sense at all, but yeah. 
dead that. But what works the best is channel locks. So This boot is not good on here, which scares me. You gotta be really careful if you're gonna do this not to wreck your boot or touch it at all. <coughs> I just give it a little tighten and it pushes it in. So I just keep alternating that through that. I don't know why it doesn't turn in when you twist it or it doesn't twist when you push it, but it has to be done this way apparently. Alright, so I think I've got it compressed enough. It should fit in there. Um, let's see if this will... There. So I guess if you pull, if you pull it too far, then it'll pop off. Now I'm going to need to loosen the e-brake off a lot, it looks like. Beauty. off it takes a while to get all the old grease out but it feels like it never ends there's so much of it I'm gonna be using this steam cleaner finish off the brakes I didn't even know I had this but my dad brought it out so it should do a really good job This caliper is pretty much ready for paint almost, but we're gonna go get the fender roller now, so. So I just got back, got the fender roller and a heat gun there. Do that in a bit. When you clean brake calipers, it'll pretty much never end. You can clean them for so long, the longer you do it for, the better they're coming out, but I'd say these are six, maybe 70%, but I'm not going for perfect. I just want to mainly, I'm painting them black. I just want to get keep the rust off them, make them look better than they are, and yeah. This boot is coming kind of damaged. It won't, I already tried for quite a while to get it under there, and it just keeps popping out, so I'm gonna need to get a new one, because that's not good. But yeah, I'm gonna start painting them. I guess I shouldn't paint the tree. So it's finally ready for paint here, and then I can start putting everything back together. Just silicone high heat lube.
three or four. Looking pretty mint. So I got the coiler off, coilover off. Now this can move. Um, I got the jack under there though, so it's kind of sturdy. And this is what it looks like before. I'm gonna clean it and then roll them. Starting to rain, so I'm gonna take the camera in, but I'm getting there. There. Pretty much rolled all the way here, got a little more to go. And then, yeah. So there it is. It's been a long day, but. I'll show you, I guess a lot of clearance there, so. Fitment is gonna be on point. What do you want? Oh, okay, I see. All right, that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that like button. And um, let me know in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like, if I should make it shorter. It's pretty long, 17 minutes and 54 seconds. I don't even know if I'd watch the whole thing. But uh, yeah, just let me know what you guys think. And what else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, the next episode will probably be putting the wheels on. I'm actually going to go and whatever else I do to it. Be it, but I'm going to go measure for spacers right now because I got the fenders rolled so I can measure it a little more accurate now. And yeah, subscribe.